And now, moving on, how do we get our documents embedded and how do we feed those embeddings into a language model? We'll be making use of that with Langchain, which is a framework for orchestrating data and language models together. It lets you explore your local data securely. So to get a closer look at what Langchain is, I'm gonna look at their website. So Langchain, as they say in their advertising, is a framework for getting your LLM application, that meaning large language model, from prototype to production. And it lets you build context-aware reasoning applications with Langchain's flexible abstractions and AI-first toolkit. What that really means is that it lets you put all of your data together. So you can get your model, and you can get your vectors, or your embeddings, and your documents, and your prompts, if you recall prompt engineering, all into one system. Langchain lets you orchestrate. It lets you use all of these miscellaneous things all at once, such that you are able to use your data and your language models in the same breath. So how that works with regard to our data then is in this week, I will be programming for you live this uh, process. So first we begin with our source over on the left-hand side here. We begin with our documents and I'll be downloading some dummy data, but if you're in a newsroom, you will have data that is similar to the data I'm downloading. Then you load your data up into the program you transform it, which all is to say is that you chunk it. You embed those chunks, so you get those numbers. So you turn, these axes are supposed to represent uh, words. You turn those words into numbers, and then you keep it in a database. And then you can retrieve uh, the most relevant documents when you need to. In other words, uh, I, can, I will be able to, at the end of this video, be able to type in something like dog and get the most relevant documents for dog, if I happen to have documents that talk about dogs. Um, and not only I will be able to look up the, the vector database as it's known, but also a language model. So once again, we load our documents, we transform them, which is to say we chunk them into smaller pieces, we embed every smaller piece, we store it in a vector database, and then we retrieve it. So, uh, to run you through this process, I have already downloaded some data, but to show you where I got my data, uh, I got my data from the city of Hamilton. So I live in Hamilton, Ontario in Canada, and my Hamilton is a very interesting Hamilton. It's not the play, it's not in New Zealand, it's my Hamilton in Canada. And Hamilton has a lot of data online that I can just download. So if I was a journalist and I wanted to verify that some things were right with my city, if I wanted to keep them accountable, and responsible, I might download, for example, uh, the census data that the city releases. And the census data um, comes, helpfully, in the form of a PDF. So I downloaded this PDF. And then also, uh, they have lots of different spreadsheets on their website, including this one called Urban Design and Architecture Awards Recipients, which has a map that lays out everyone who won an award, but they also keep the data in a table. And so I downloaded the table as a spreadsheet. And I'm going to load both documents up into Langchain. And Langchain will let me load it, transform it, embed it, store it, and eventually retrieve it. So this process is uh, now known as retrieve augmented generation. In case you wanted to know what the technical term is, that's now a recognized industry term for this process. And I will be doing it for you live. So to begin, I've opened up JupyterLab Desktop and I've opened up a series of tabs uh, containing documentation for how to do that retrieval augmented generation process. So the very first thing I'm going to do in JupyterLab is open up a new notebook. So I've opened up a new notebook. It's connected to Python for me. I can type in here. I can hit uh, enter to run that code and it's a bit of a blank slate. So the very first thing I'm going to do and you'll be able to download this notebook, so you don't have to type along with me, is I'm going to install Langchain. And Python comes with a uh, program for downloading packages or modules or libraries, which are kind of like extensions for Python. And I'm going to install Langchain. And because I've already installed Langchain, it's already done it for me. But anyway, so I've installed Langchain now. And because I have a PDF that I would like to load up, I'm going to take a look at 
the part of Langchain's documentation concerning PDFs. And they recommend using something called PyPDF, which is like, okay. So I'm going to copy and paste the code that they give me because that's the best way to learn how to program. Uh, programmers will never tell you this, but one way to program is to just look up what you're trying to do on Google and copy the answer from Stack Overflow. And so I will be doing precisely that. So I've installed something called PyPDF, which is another extension for reading PDFs. And I'm gonna look at how they load up PDFs. So first, they load up the PyPDF loader. They point it at a file, it seems. They load it up, and then they have access to the text of the file. Okay, sounds good. I'm going to copy and paste that data. So from langchain.documentloaders import PyPDF loader, all this to say is that I'm loading up a part of Langchain, uh, Langchain responsible for reading PDFs. The next thing I'm going to do is load up the PDF now that I've loaded up the PDF loader. So I'm going to type loader. I'm going to type PyPDF, press tab to autocomplete, and I'm going to point it at the desktop. And I have a folder called Generative AI for Journalists, and I have a folder inside that folder called Week 2. I'm going to look at the data in Week 2, and I've got two fold files here. I'm going to pick uh, the census file, which is a PDF, and I'm going to press uh, Control Enter. So I've loaded up the PDF, and I'm going to press loader.load and split because I'm just copying and pasting from that over there. And just like in the example code, I'm going to look at the first page of the PDF. And as I can see, it's a whole bunch of information and it looks like a bit of a pain to understand, but luckily I'm not going to have to understand it, but luckily I'm not going to have to understand it. Rather, I'm going to have a language model understand it for me. So what I've done, is I've loaded up Langchain, I've loaded up a PDF loader, and I've loaded up my target PDF. And now I'm going to do the same for my, C, uh, for my CSV, but instead I'm going to name my PDF PDF. So now, how to load up a CSV? Clearly, it comes with something already, uh, a CSV, by the way, in case you don't know, is a spreadsheet. It's like an Excel spreadsheet. It's a machine-readable spreadsheet, and as Langchain helpfully explains, that's a delimited text file that uses a comma to separate values. So I'm going to load up uh, the loader for the CSV, and just like I did before, I'm going to create a new loader, CSV loader, and then I'm going to point it once again to my desktop, because that's where my data is, called Generative AI for Journalists, targeted at number week uh, two, the data in week two, and I'll load up the CSV file containing the data I took from the city of Hamilton's open data web portal. And once again, I'm going to load the data, and I can print it, and I can see that I have loaded the CSV, and it's split it up by row by row by row into a series of documents. Looks good. Okay, so now I've loaded up my CSV and my PDF. Okay, so I'm going to begin. The next step after you've loaded your documents is embedding. So I'm going to embed my documents and because I don't want to use OpenAI, uh, so OpenAI, the creators of ChatGPT have a very popular embedding model, but the point of this course is to teach you how to do it on your own computer because you shouldn't trust OpenAI nor any other large uh, generative AI manufacturer or producer or researcher because they make money off of data. They want your data. They want you to give them your data. If they say they don't train off your data, they probably don't, but nonetheless, they have your data. And if you're a journalist and you receive a USB stick full of confidential documents, the first thing you're not going to want to do is plug that into a computer and upload it straight to Google or OpenAI. So with that said, we are going to embed our documents locally. And we are going to do that with something called sentence transformers. And I've navigated to the sentence transformers part of Langchain as uh, uh, documentation, and I'm going to start copying and pasting code. Okay, so and then I'm going to copy and paste the next line because the whole point of this presentation 
is to show that you don't exactly know, need to know how to program. So here it's loading up something called all mini LM. I think that's going to embed my document. And they have an example here. So uh, we are going to try to load this document. So embeddings.embed query text. Ah, we got numbers. So here we can see that this model that we've loaded up with sentence transformers has turned this text into a series of numbers. And this these numbers are machine readable. Language models can understand these numbers. Great, so it looks like it's doing what it should. Okay, awesome. Now that I can embed documents, I'm going to look at a vector store. And I'll figure out how to set up a vector store. A vector store. So I can put all of my documents and their uh, embedded form into a single uh, repository. And so, just like I did last time, I'm going to navigate to the relevant page in the documentation on vector stores. And they have a little explanation of how it works. You take your source data, you put it into the vector store, and you also embed every single source data and turn them into numbers and embed that together with the original document. And then you can retrieve the most similar, in quotes as they have it here, document based off some sort of query. So to get started, uh, we are going to install Chroma DB, which is a popular uh, which is a popular vector store. It's very simple. It uses SQLite in the background. If you know something about computers, SQLite stores a database in a single file. And it's finished. We've installed it. Uh, and we can see that there are a number of things to do here. So I'm going to pick the parts of this example code that are most relevant to us. So we've already loaded text, so we don't need to do that, but we haven't yet split our text, nor have we imported Chroma. So we're going to do those. And then it looks like we take our PDF and we take our CSV and we split them. Okay, sounds good. So we're gonna take this, and we'll produce a new text splitter uh, micro program. And it looks like text Splitter let's split documents and we can stick in, for example, our CSV and our PDF. Okay, and now we can see that we can make a database by typing DB equals Chroma from documents and we give it both the documents and also our embedding model. So I've done just that and I'll press enter. We can see that it's finished. So now I'll give it the CSV file db dot, I'm gonna guess it's probably, yeah, add documents, CSV. Minimize this. So now we've added both our CSV and our PDF into a single database. And it seems here that we can look up a query. So we can type in, for example, where do most people live? And then we can type similarity, uh, db dot similarity search, type in query, and it gives back our most relevant document, and which here clearly appears to be the CSV file we've added. But we can also type, uh, for example, let's see, an award concerning technology, maybe. And we can get this back. Okay, and the most relevant document is an award describing uh, a project from the Start Institute that wants to create a 88,000 square feet of state-of-the-art instructional space in the refurbishment, yada, yada. So anyway, we can see that it's about engineers. And an award concerning art, press enter, and it brings back something about the James, uh, the James Street North, James Street North Art Crawl. North James Street, maybe, I forget, anyway. So anyway, there's an art event in Hamilton once a year. It's brought back a document concerning that. So we can see, scrolling back to the top now, that we are taking advantage of the power of retrieval augmented generation by loading up a series of documents, inserting those documents into a vector database first after embedding them, and then we can look up random queries and we can get back the most relevant results from our database. And so for next week, the next step will be hooking up a language model to this so that that language model can go through your documents to answer questions more 
uh, intelligently. So here we can turn, uh, we can look up an award concerning art. It will turn that query, as we saw, into numbers, and then bring back the most relevant sections. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's precisely answering our question. So stay tuned, and I hope to see you in week number three.